Wow, um, it's been a wild week. I hope you guys are staying calm and staying safe. And I wanted to make a piece of content that is sort of related to that situation for all the Model 3 owners and Tesla owners as well. Um, I've, had to, I've done a little bit of research myself because I was a little bit stressed about this. Whilst this situation's happened, there's a, I've done a little bit of research of how to look after the Tesla whilst we are in a three week. Looks like it's going to be more longer than that. Could be six weeks, could be 12 weeks, we don't know. Whilst we're in this lockdown, and how to look after your Model 3 whilst during a lockdown and that's what I'm going to be going through now a lot of people probably think there's not much to it but there are a few things that you want to do and some things maybe you want to change about your car's settings and stuff like that to make sure you don't damage your car and that your car is okay to drive when this is all over because because there's a few different things that you need to do to maintain the car so here is a complete guide of how to look after your Model 3 whilst it's stationary. Some things we're about to do are essential and you, you have to do them the, you, to maintain your car. And then some things are just guidance and things that I will be personally following myself and doing myself, but are not required to do. But some things are essential. So we're gonna go through the, all of that right now. Let's hop onto it, lads and ladies. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so with an EV, one of the biggest questions everyone's asking about it, and this is the first thing I'm gonna talk about, is the battery. How do we look after the battery in this situation? At the moment, we have a three week lockdown. It looks like it could be longer than that. I, I don't think it's gonna be three weeks. I think it's gonna be a lot longer, but that's just my personal opinion. So it could cause major issues if you were to leave your car unattended for three weeks in the wrong settings, um, with unattended and not doing anything to it. So that's what we're gonna go through. So how exactly would the Model 3 look after three weeks of just leaving it? So if you have, this is, for, this is for people who are similar to the situation as me, if you have sentry mode activated, which is a large portion of Model 3 owners, you are looking every single day at losing around 20 to 24 miles of range. That's in my car, I get that, that I will lose around 20 to 24 miles of range to have the sentry mode activated on the vehicle. So with sentry mode activated in the standard range plus, you're looking at getting around 10 days or if we were to go by those metrics, you're going to get around 10 days. But there is one thing to note, if the car gets to around 40 or 50 miles, it will automatically deactivate sentry mode to put the car into a protection mode um, and to slow the loss of range down. Um, so it will automatically switch off. You won't be able to activate sentry mode in that range. I think it's around 40 to 50 miles. It's happened to me once before. And this way you're gonna squeeze out a few extra days of the car and the car's gonna be able to protect itself for a few extra days. But you're gonna be looking at around the two week mark for the battery getting kind of dangerously low. Now, if it was to take a long range Tesla or a model, a long range Model 3, you're probably gonna get an extra three or four days out of the range if you've got sentry mode activated. So what happens when the main battery is fully drained? There's no range left in it and it's fully drained. Well, Tesla's vehicles and batteries are extremely intelligent cars. They've got extremely intelligent battery management systems in place. It probably won't cause that much damage to the battery, if any at all. Like they're designed to be able to do this. They, they work, they've worked these situations into their systems before, but you won't be able to drive the car. Well, that's one thing. You're not gonna be able to drive the car if you fully drain the battery you're risking causing damage to the battery and you're also risking the need for a rescue truck to be called or a service center call. You're risking that if you if you drain the battery fully down. Okay, so a thing to note in the user's manual, the user's manual says, if you allow your battery to discharge to 0%, other components may be damaged or require replacement, for example, the 12 volt battery. In these cases, you are responsible for repairs and transporting expenses. Discharge related expenses are not covered by warranty or under roadside assistance. So that's something to really note. So don't let the battery discharge. That's the most important thing. Tesla aren't gonna fix anything for you if you let the battery discharge to 0%. To keep the battery topped up at all costs, that's the most important thing. Everything's in the user manual. Everything is in the user manual. So 
if you haven't got sentry mode activated, the drain's minimal. You get a, 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 a few miles, single digit miles loss a day, and the drain's minimal, and your car will probably be fine for two to three weeks um, at least, and maybe top the battery up every so often. But yeah, you're not gonna be as bad, but if you need that sentry mode, it's a different story, obviously. So what's the best thing for a Tesla that's gonna be sitting for around two or three months? What's the best way to treat the car? That's what I'm after. What is the best way? So if you have a charger, plug it in. Um, especially if you've got a sentry mode activated, it will keep the battery topped up, the charger will speak to the car, very intelligent system, and that will maintain the battery's health. So another thing just to know, Model 3 has one of the most sophisticated battery systems in the world. The most important way to preserve the battery is to leave it plugged in when you are not using it. It's that simple, that's the owner manual. If you can, leave it plugged in, end of. No, no, no discussion, no argument. This is what is in the Tesla manual. The battery is super intelligent. The chargers can interact with each other. The battery and the charger will interact with each other and the battery will be safe. So ultimately leave the car truck plugged in. So the other question is when you're doing this is what limits should you set your battery health to? And personally, um, this is, well, this is debatable. People talk about it a lot. And the number that most people run towards is 50%. So set your battery's limit at 50% and the car will just constantly top it up and down, top it up and when it falls, the car will top it back up. But that being said, um, there's no, T Tesla have never um, indicated what's best. And I don't think you're talking, you're splitting hairs between, if you were to charge between 50, 80 and 90%, 50 to 80, 90%. I don't think it's gonna cause many problems at all, if any. Um, and I don't, I think Tesla would have said something if that was the case. So I don't think it matters too much. I'm personally, if, if I was in that situation, I'd be going to 50%, but that's just my personal opinion. So that's, the best thing you can do is plug it in. That's what Tesla recommend when you're going on holiday. They recommend you just leave it plugged in. The car will do all the work for you, fine. What happens if you don't have a home charger like me? I don't have a home charger. My charger is actually at my workplace and because I work extremely long hours, it's never been a problem for me. So this is a unique situation for me and I'm not gonna have a charger. So what do people like us do? Because I know there's a lot of guys in this exact same position. Um, those guys without a home charger, you might even have to park on the street. It's a likely circumstance that you're parking on the street and if you're parking on the street, there's even more of a likely chance that you are using sentry mode. So what do we do? What do people in that situation do? Luckily for me, I'm in a car park, but I still have to have sentry mode. So unfortunately, the best thing you can do is charge the car. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but these are weird times. And being able to charge the car might be hard for some of you guys to do. It might be hard for you to make a, make a trip. Now, as it stands, I don't think if you were to let the battery get down to around 50 miles of range and then go charge the car up, I don't think you're gonna get in trouble for doing that in the UK right now. I think if you explain the situation, you probably wouldn't have any issues. That's what I'm gonna be doing. I am going to be driving out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be driving to the workplace, topping the car up, just sitting inside the vehicle. I'm gonna be doing it in the early mornings and then I'm driving home and that's it. So at once a week-ish, I'm gonna be doing that just to top the battery back up. And unfortunately, that is the circumstances for most of us guys who are in the same situation. You need to go charge, you need to go top your battery up. Now, there is another, circ uh, uh, there is another um, option you guys have, and that would be to turn sentry mode off. If you turn sentry mode off, the battery drain or the phantom drain is going to be a lot less. Or is it vampire drain? I don't know what they call it, but it will be a lot less. You're going to use a lot miles. It'll go down to one, one or two miles a day. Turn sentry mode off and that will, that will sort your issue. Now, if you're like me and you don't have that option, and personally, if you are on street parking or even private parking in a car park, I personally would always keep sentry mode on. Unfortunately, this happened to my car recently and I'm gonna do a video on it soon. Uh, I just wanna do a full video on it. Sentry mode is a must, you have gotta keep it on. So the other option some of you guys might have is, is dragging an extension lead to your car and then using the three pin home charger. Now, if we get on a full lockdown, that's something I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be topping my car, car up with a three pin charger. I think you can get around, I think it's eight to 10 miles of range added an hour. Uh, which is more than enough to top your car up. You'd need to leave it on for a couple of, two, two or three hours a day and you'd have 20, 20 24 miles. Um, so a three pin charge is possible. It's possible to use it to top up. 
Um, you could leave it on for a whole day and then come and then leave it to drain down again. But yeah, I will be using a three-pin charger if we get in a full lockdown where you'd get fines for driving or anything like that. I'm gonna do a, um, I'm gonna do that basically. Don't worry about it too much in terms of the damage to the car. It's more of the um, circumstances that you're having to get the car going again and stuff like that. But don't worry about it too much. That's the worst case scenario. Now, talking of batteries, it's not your main battery that's gonna probably cause the issues if the battery was to drain. It's actually the car's 12 volt battery that could be your issue causer. So like all cars, the Tesla Model 3 has a 12 volt battery. And that 12 volt battery does stuff like the 12 volt sockets, it does the interior lights, the blinkers, the screen, all those kind of things. The 12 volt battery works, the uh, the door the door opening, the windows, all that sort of stuff so like like all cars how does the model 3 charge its battery the model 3 charges its 12 volt battery by trickle charging into from the main battery using a converter into the battery the 12 volt battery itself unlike normal cars normal cars would use an alternator that uses the it's like spins a little wheel whilst it's moving it has to be moving and the engine or the engine has to be on and use a little wheel that then kicks power back into the battery allowing you to charge the battery every so often um, i don't think that was always the case as well but from tesla i think the old s's and x's worked in a similar fashion to old to normal vehicles. But yeah, so on the Model 3, the Model 3 will charge up the 12 volt battery. So this is where the main issue could occur. So if your main battery dies, then the 12 volt battery no longer has something to top it off. And your 12 volt battery can then die. And if your 12 volt battery dies, you can get into a, a, quite a, a few little problems. You probably get locked out your vehicle. You probably won't be able to access the vehicle. Um, people call it this bricked. So it'll call your Tesla a bricked Tesla. And it's not, it's not as bad as it used to be like with a Tesla Roadster. If that thing went to zero, you were done. But um, it's gonna basically warrant a call from a Tesla service center, most likely. It might even need to be towed away. Um, and it can cause lots of problems. So this is the reason we want to keep the main battery topped up so the 12 volt battery doesn't die. Um, because if the 12 volt battery dies, then we do have issues and that's when we need to start looking um, into calling someone and getting something paid for like a service or a tow or something like that. So yeah, keep the battery topped up so we don't have the 12 volt battery dying on us. Don't let the don't let the battery die. Don't let the main battery die. That's the ba basically the biggest thing. Don't let the battery die. If that battery doesn't die, the 12 volt battery won't die and you won't have any issues. That's the main thing. If you can and you have the possibility, switch sentry mode off. That's going to give you a lot more time. Uh, it's going to give you a lot longer time. If you can park it under a camera or something like that so you feel like the car is safe, try and turn sentry mode off. That's going to give you worlds of time and it means you might it might mean you need to top it up once every two or three weeks as opposed to probably once a week with the sentry mode activated, maybe even a little bit more frequently. But yeah, turn that off if you can. And that doesn't mean just pulling out the USB, the system's still activated. So make sure you pull out the USB and turn it off in the app or in the, in the uh, screen. So what's the best thing you can do? with your battery stay plugged in that's the best thing you can do keep your car plugged in simple second to that just don't let the battery die simple the batteries are smart enough to not cause damage to themselves don't worry about it too much if you have to let it drain and top it back up let it drain and top it back up don't worry about that um, but don't let it die or keep it plugged in it's that simple that's what Tesla designed it to do. Okay, let's move on to another thing. So, one other thing I wanna talk about is brakes and wheels. Um, and this applies to nearly all vehicles. So last time I took the Model 3 to the service center, the, um, the car had sat for around seven days. And the first thing I noticed when I drove the Tesla Model 3 off was the squeak from the brakes. It was really squeaky. And it's because the brakes had seized up a little bit, very slightly, causing the brakes to squeak. The brakes to squeak. Now, um, if you're going to be leaving the car for a month or two months or three months, um, the brakes will seize up a little bit. That's going to happen, and they'll, I don't know if it, it's going to cause that much excessive wear or damage. But to prevent it, me personally, I will be rolling the car slightly backwards and slightly forwards every couple of days or so, just to stop that from prevent that from happening. Or if you can. Do a little lap around the block 
Um, again, if you're driving to, super, to a charger or something, it's not gonna be too much of a problem, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna be moving backwards and forwards. That will stop the brake seizing up. It happens with all cars, not just Teslas, but it's just something to bear in mind. So another thing to consider is flat spots in your tires. So with the Model 3 and the all Teslas being extremely heavy vehicles, um, there's a possibility to create flat spots in the tires. A flat spot is where the car's wheel comes into contact with the floor and over time compresses, creating a flat portion of the tire. And then the car, it basically remolds the tire to be a little bit flatter over time. When you drive off eventually in a month or two months time, that can cause excessive wear, uh, wheel misalignments. It can cause quite a lot of problems. Now this only usually happens if the car has been sat for 30 days. So there's a couple ways to combat this from happening. The first way to combat it from happening is to drive the car. So if you can do a lap of the block again, or you can move the car slightly. So it repositions the point of where the pressure is on the wheel. Um, for me, as a worst case scenario, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna just be rolling the car forward a little bit for the brakes anyway, and I'll be parking it just a few like maybe half a foot forward and then um and just try and rotate the wheel a little bit every so often that's a good way of doing it or a way that a lot of people do it is they over inflate their tires to something like 46 psi that creates less contact point if you can imagine because it's pumped up even more now it creates less contact point with a flat surface meaning that it's not going to cause um, any flat spots and people swear by this and also it, sound, it's, it sounds pretty solid advice as well uh, but for me if I can't I'm going to try and do a, a, a lap every so often or um, I'm going to try and move the car as a worst case scenario that's me personally okay and lastly lastly this is the last one this is completely another little slightly optional one um, is to wash the car now I know obviously People are washing the cars anyway. It's not like you're going to stop washing your car, but once the car, if the car's sitting, um, we can get loads of dust and stuff over it, which is not too much of a problem. But if you're leaving it two or three months before washing the car, you've got more of a chance of damaging the paintwork when you when you wash it because there's more grit and stuff on it. And for me, it's not no biggie again. But I'm going to be washing the car once every week or so because I like to do it and also because uh, because I, i'm a bit precious of the car right now so yeah even though i've got this horrible mark on the side but yeah i'm a bit precious of the car right now with that being said another little piece of advice in terms of washing the car is do not park under a tree do not park under a tree otherwise you're going to end up like this guy and that can damage your paintwork so Wherever you're parking, try not to dam to pay park underneath a tree. If you are parking underneath a tree, consider getting a car cover or washing the car regularly. Because if you get bird poo all over your car, it can damage the paintwork quite seriously. Um, so yeah, try not to park under a tree. I'm very close to a tree right here. And I've noticed a tiny little bit of bird poo on the side from last night. But like I said, I'm gonna be washing the car quite regularly. It's not too much of a problem. And I think I'm gonna move over a little bit here because I've got some more space over this side. I'll be moving over a little bit. But yeah, do not park under a tree. That would be a disaster. I've done it before as well, it's not good. I know a lot of people are wanting to probably see that mark on the side of the car and think, why hasn't he done a video about that yet? I will be doing a video about that. Um, I just want to get all the pieces to the puzzle together correctly. I don't want to just draw it out and like have loads of updates. But yeah, I'm going to be dropping a video on the damage. So to round it up, very simple. Stay plugged in or keep your car charged. It's that simple. Obviously, some of you might struggle with that and I uh, really hope you guys manage to get it sorted. But stay plugged in, stay charged um, or turn sentry mode off if you want to save some range. Roll back and forth every so often or try and drive around the block if you can and you're all good. That's it pretty much. You'll be fine. There's no there's no issues going to happen with the car if, if you got that's the case. So just remember this as well, just for peace of mind. Your car is like Einstein compared to these ICE cars. So. The car's gonna be fine no matter what, don't worry about it. These tips are only gonna save you hassle. If that's all it's gonna do, it's only gonna save you hassle. Um, your car's not gonna spontaneously break, don't worry about it, don't stress too much. Um, I hope everyone's doing fine with this whole thing that's going off. I hope you're managing to get all your work done. I'm gonna try and keep it as 
normal as possible. Um, I'll keep pumping out my content as normal. I've got some great videos coming up, or bo very boring, but great videos in my opinion. Um, I've got some good videos coming up. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for listening to my voice drone on. Thanks for liking and supporting all that sort of stuff. And just stay safe at the moment, guys. Anyway, with all that being said, thank you very much. That's Jordan for Just Tesla. Goodbye.